Okay, this meeting's being recorded. I think we're all here. There's a lot of participants. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, so I think we'll start by scheduling design meetings and then go through updates or other topics that people have in mind. This month is kind of short uh, because we missed one week. Um, oops. But we could schedule more, and but I would rather stick to the calendar myself. Um, which means we only have two days. Um, there's a few possible topics here. Uh, there's the guiding principles for the REST language, um, WASM ABI, Lint oversight. I think this is not really re requiring a meeting at this point. Didn't we like make- Lint oversight, I think last time we said someone probably needs to write a I think it should be this, and then everyone will either say, uh, we need a meeting, or sure, great. Yes, and I don't think anyone's done that, right? Correct. Yeah. And I think to the extent that we need to discuss what exactly that, that something should look like, we could do that asynchronously via Zulip, and then when we have something we think is reasonable to get consensus on, we could go get consensus on it. Yeah. I don't feel this is high urgency. Uh, I would love it if someone wants to take, you know, initiative. Um, but uh, but this deny bear trade objects didn't we? Can, didn't we vote I think on we this? We more or less agreed on this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's a sort of action item to close this, um, or and link to the. I, th I sort of remember there being a PR even, but yeah, right. there's a PR yeah. that's in FCP. Uh, yeah. I think. Okay, so good. Um, one thing that I just opened now was generator planning. This came out of talking to um, Esteban over the last couple of days, who's been kind of investigating generators, especially in the context of the async vision doc, uh, because they would help address some of the need for people to interact with PIN in painful ways. And we were Generators talking about- one? Yeah. Uh, because you don't need to write streams by hand. Um, oh, sure. That's one of the main reasons people use PIN, basically. Um, not the only one. Uh, so yeah, the idea would be to have a meeting. Well, Esteban, do you want to talk about it? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I really want to see- Briefly. These, yeah, I, I want to see this driven to completion uh, at ideally this year, I know that there is a lot, there have been a lot of conversations which I've been uh, digging into, but I want to, it seems like there hasn't been anyone actually, any single driven driving force. And I want to make sure that uh, we do uh, have someone, uh, potentially me, uh, pushing for it. Um, I know that there are conversations around uh, both semantics and syntax um, that we don't, that I want to try to settle this year. Uh, and of course that falls under the purview of the language team. So I think the meeting would be to f sketch a plan for how this would proceed, right? Not what? like a plan, a plan for how to settle the disputes and, and so forth. Yeah. And I, I know that there are, there is at least one RFC for generators open, but uh, I am guessing that we are going to have to write RFCs for the actual stabilization of the feature uh, because the one that is open doesn't really have a conversation about it, a, a guided conversation to do that. Okay. What about, um, let's go in order to give a little more detail. So the guiding principles, I'm gonna just say that I'd rather defer this till May, um, but I can briefly say what's going on is that I was working on the async vision doc on sketching tenets, which I've now renamed to guiding principles based on Florian's feedback that nobody knows what tenets mean, who's not a 
which is true, uh, or that they're not, that wasn't quite how he said it, that they're less friendly to non-native speakers is what his point was, the word is. But in any case, uh, for async Rust, and I kind of think the ones I wound up with, which we'll have to get feedback on and so forth, are kind of nice and almost feel like actually principles for Rust. And maybe async Rust is just sort of a, let's take those principles and talk about how they apply in an async context, which is kind of cool. And so I wanted to talk about them with the team, but I think it's not super urgent and there's only two, they're not, I haven't even finished writing them up. So I'd rather defer. Um, we had a paper doc or something somewhere that yeah, we did. wasn't as it was less high level, than I think, what I'm looking on. Yeah. yeah, definitely. But maybe right. there's something there that we can turn into another one. Yeah, I think there might be room for, I, I have been looking at that too. Um, there might be room to add supplementary supplementary material. Be an interesting I'll just, I'll just, like call for internals comment or something as well of like all the people who complain about every new proposal on internals. If they could make a guiding principle out of what they're saying, that would be awesome. I'll just mention here for people who aren't aware that I I got a, a, a another document that's about guiding principles for contributors for developing and adding stuff to Rust as in like, you know, the compiler itself, um, which is a different topic and definitely doesn't, I was wondering if there'd be overlap between what's here and what's there and it really isn't much. Um, but yeah, in case you're curious, um, it's I think a separate we might thing. want something like that too, <laughs> but uh, it's a different doc. Okay, what's going on with this WASM thing? Talk to me. <laughs> Josh, were, were you familiar with it? Yes, I was the one who proposed that this be scheduled as a meeting. So uh, Alex Crichton is working on uh, providing a path forward for WebAssembly interoperability. There's some uh, details there regarding ABI compatibility, where <coughs> pardon me, where um, Wasm Bindgen had a slightly different ABI than the actual long-term WebAssembly API, ABI that's used in other runtimes. And they're trying to uh, regularize that. And the Wasm ABI being proposed here is a path forward for that, for saying, here is the ABI that always interoperates with whatever Wasm runtime you're running inside of whether or not that's the same as the C ABI for the platform. Is that part of like the whatever specification effort would be appropriate? <laughs> like where does it originate from this API proposal? Okay. Uh, so I believe that this is proposing to match the underlying uh, LLVM and WASM time and new WASM bind gen and similar ABIs. So this is collaborative across quite a number of WebAssembly runtimes, I believe. Okay. And would we be talking anyway, about the details of how this works or what, what is the LANG uh, team like? So the language here? proposal here is uh, more about is this a thing that we want to commit to, to having an ABI named WASM that has this semantic, what precisely the semantic is, how it would differ from C on platforms that have both. And uh, this was something I felt like deserved a full uh, design meeting to discuss as opposed to trying to handle it entirely asynchronously because it seemed like a high bandwidth discussion of what is the WASM vision in general and what are the next steps and how that will integrate into the Rust language design seemed like a worthy discussion. Yeah. So okay. there's, there is a roadmap here for what does this transition plan look like? What happens with old WASM bind gen? What are the next steps past this for WebAssembly? And that seems interesting for sure. So I would propose we schedule WASM and generators, <laughs> but what is ongoing discussion about drop? Oh, I mean, I think that's not even in scope. That can't happen. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I wanted to bring it up less because of scheduling a full design meeting and more, do people even think this is a possibility to happen for 2021? If the answer no, is no. yes, we would need to schedule something right away. If the answer uh, is no, then we can take our time. Well, I'll say that uh, putting on my 2021 planning hat, we already ruled this out on the basis of the deadline for like 
there should be an accepted RFC was beginning of April, right. and there's not even a plan, much less an accepted RFC. Uh, we're stretching it for some places where there's like, okay, it's not accepted, but it's written and kind of there, works. Right. right. Um, I agree. Um, and given that, I don't think this needs to be a uh, design meeting scheduled in a rush. I think that there would be value in getting the folks who are working on this to bring a proposal in, but we could schedule that for a design meeting in May and uh, try to have it get, happen in 2022 or so instead and just plan on having an opt-in and making it part of the 2024 edition. Assuming I we yeah, I haven't really followed this transition. discussion at all. I'm not, so I don't have an opinion about it. Right. Like whether it's something we'd actually want to do, although I'm skeptical, <laughs> but. Um, the quick semantic version is for correctness purposes, drop really should take pin mute self because it's uh, incorrect for it to free things that are pinned while giving you a mute self that violates some of the guarantees of pin. But on the other hand, fixing that would potentially require changing every drop implementation and making everyone deal with pin, even people who aren't otherwise dealing with pinned types. So part of the major design back and forth is, is there a way to make this only affect people who are already dealing with the complexity of pin rather than everyone who writes a drop implementation, which is almost certainly a larger group. Okay. So ongoing discussion happening yeah. on Zulip. And I think once it gets to the point of a concrete proposal or a family of concrete proposals, it would be worth scheduling in May. That's um, fine. Sorry, not to dive into the specific topic, but I'm assuming someone's already talked about the sort of like where bound as, as like a, on the sort of default impulse approach. That sounds like an excellent thing to take to Zulu. Okay, I'll, 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 sorry, I've, I've not been part of this conversation for a long time, so. I think that's taking place in sort of also the, a weird place, right? Like we should move it out from the addition stream and into somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. That should probably <laughs> live in either a Lang or Libs uh, oh. design discussion. That explains why I've missed it. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. in the edition 2021 section. If we're all in agreement that this shouldn't happen for edition 2021, we should move that uh, discussion and to a place where more people will be able to participate in it anyway. And it is mostly a libs question insofar as like the drop implementation changing, but since drop is fundamentally part of the language as well and invoked by the language, it also kind of is a lang thing. So, how do people feel about these two as things to do this time? WASM and generators? Sounds great. I, I am a bit I worried on timeline, I guess. But if we feel optimistic, then maybe, I don't know. What timeline? In, in terms of like, there's not, you know, the 21st is not that far away. And both of these feel like pretty hefty topics. I'm not sure how much work has already been done that would be. So like, concretely, um, I gave Alex a heads up suggesting that it would need some ongoing preparation. And that preparation was actually done in preparation for us doing a design planning meeting last week and a design meeting this week. So I believe this is actually ready to be discussed and we could schedule the WASM ABI for the 21st. And then that would let us schedule generators for the 28th and give uh, Esteban a substantial amount of additional time for planning. And then if we don't see a, a concrete proposal for here's exactly the agenda for that meeting and what we're going to be going through by around the start of that week, we can always decide to cancel or reschedule. Yep, that, that sounds great yeah. then. That sounds fine. I mean, our usual rule is, right, should be a doc the day before. <laughs> I stand by that rule right. for now. Uh, Who's going to make the doc in this case? Uh, uh, so for this one, I would expect that to be Alex. For generators, I'd expect that to be Esteban. Right. right, just making sure that Alex is aware that that's expected that we would like an actual doc, not just links to the the, the, the description on the on issue 90 is not by itself a sufficient doc. That's all I want to make sure Alex, someone tells Alex that. Um, would you be up for volunteering to have that conversation with Alex? <laughs> I, can I think um, I know, I'm actually asking concretely because 
I have a bunch of the context on the extern WASM proposal. So recognizing the degree to which the document is sufficiently complete may be more difficult for me than for somebody who hasn't already been digging into that. Well, I, I can do it or Nico can do it. Um, it sounds like. Either one's fine with me. All right, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, Nico. Okay. I said I will reach out to Alex and try to. I mean, the qu part of the question is Zoom. like, I mean, in the well, right, so but we can all see. I mean, I mean, it's, it's in part a question of like, you know, even giving an example to look at. And I know that the uh, the most obvious example I can think of isn't actually good enough. The the uh, the atomic um, thing, the meeting that I drove, the duck there wasn't sufficient, and, and the I, blog post was too big, and the doc was too. Skeletal. I guess I disagree with that. <laughs> but the meeting yeah, went fine. We had great productive well. meeting. Uh, I mean, like the end. The doc is a kicking off point for a discussion. It's not. Mm -hmm. you, if it yeah. if it had all the answers, we wouldn't need the discussion in the first place, right? Um, all right. All right. Well, then at least I'll point him at what those are as an example of what uh, that's the thing that was that was used as a document, and then to let him decide. And, and I'll try to express my own dismay about it, but also say that it, the meeting itself went well. Okay. Well, try not to be too hard on that document just because you wrote it, because I think it did produce a great meeting. I actually think there's a really good point you just made, Nico, that's probably worth capturing in some general guidance for these types of design meeting documents, that they don't need to have all the answers because that's why we're having the meeting. They need to have most of the right questions I think they should collect. It's. It, I've been thinking about trying to write guidelines. It's a little tricky. I think it, sure. it's, uh, but yeah, having good questions is a good start. And key key links and things that may come up. But actually, what I also like is the idea of giving. <clears throat> we could do a little bit of it right now. Trying for each meeting to give some expectation, like and document of what we would like to see. Uh, I think for WebAssembly, I guess what I would like to see is an, an over, me personally, is sort of an overview of, yeah, some details about this ABI, but also what's, what's kind of happening around WebAssembly and what is the most yeah. likely places that it may impact the language. So as a sort of heads up. The roadmap sketch would be particularly helpful for that meeting, I think, yeah. Does that sound like what other people would like to hear? Yeah, I, I guess one one maybe additional piece to that is like, to some extent, why is this a laying question in the sense of like, you know, Maybe even, I guess my, my question might be like, why is there a WASM ABI and not, you know, we don't have ABIs for every other target. Um, so maybe some clarification there. So that might play into the roadmap. I think that is part of the proposal here is here's why this is an ABI named WASM and not just a definition of the C ABI for the WASM targets. There is a concrete proposal there for why those are two different things. Okay, well, I guess uh, links to that or, you know, copy paste or whatever. Right. Yep. And for the generators, we kind of talked a little bit about it already, but this is what we had saying. Sketch what the open questions are and present a sort of overall plan uh, for how they will, they will get resolved. And maybe some initial, I think it might be useful to have a straw person, uh, not syntax and design, but just straw person for the plan and, and, and some details that we can see if there's agreement on them. OK. All right, great. Um, then Felix, you can relay this, I'll put this um, to Alex.
Uh, okay, shall we go through some of the updates from the active projects? Um, this time I did it a little differently in that I had people update on the actual tracking issues. And I asked them to focus on these questions. Uh, what are recent topics, exciting developments, points where the group is stuck, things like that. Um, I meant to, but didn't, uh, but maybe I will next time, write a cool script that scrapes those comments and paste them in line. But since I didn't do that, we'll just page through. Um, so for const evaluation, this is the comment. Uh, and I guess it says the main thing is the const UB RFC, which we know about. Which and is currently... Uh in proposal to FCP with three out of five checkboxes. Yeah. So it has been rewritten as requested. Um, there you go. Taylor and Felix, take a look. For async foundations. Um, so there's the work going on in the async vision doc. Is I guess everyone is familiar with that probably because I've been spamming you all with it. Is that true? Uh, if not, talk to me later. Um, Familiar with, yes, up to date on the current contents of no. I'll briefly say that what's there now, like what we're doing now is kind of this, oh, what, I messed up the mark down here or something, is, is kind of um, the uh, assembling the brainstorming period. So we've got all these status quo stories that people have been writing and there's some more they go about different problems people have had. And now we're just starting on sketching out shiny future. So definitely, but these are all, the idea here is everybody who opens a PR, unless it's like a violation of this, the, you know, uh, what do you call it? Code of conduct or something. Uh, I'm gonna merge it sooner or later. So it's really every idea that people have had. And then we're gonna do a kind of phase where we pick and try to assemble them. Um, and so that, that's where we're in now is more of the like brainstorming period. So if you read something here and you're like, what, this doesn't seem feasible, that's okay. Um, but what I would say is that the other thing is that the shiny future is meant to, it's meant to be a few years out and it doesn't necessarily mean we know how to do it yet. It's kind of this what we'd really like to try for and we think it's possible, educated guess. Uh, so that's the spirit I want people to bring into it. Um, I'd love it if people took a look in part because I wanna do this process. But so far, I feel really good about it and I think it could be really useful for us in other contexts, um, but more on that later. I think the other thing which I didn't put in this comment is there are still some, well, for example, the must not await lint. I think the, uh, that all got merged and we're sort of in implementation phase for those things now. Uh, and in fact, I think I, no, maybe I didn't, I should make a separate project for it. Um, const generics. One thing people might like to know is that there's now a regular const generics meeting every Tuesday morning. It's more implementation focused, but if people are interested, uh, you can pop in. It's on the compiler team calendar, I think. Um, we're kind of working around on the core implementation and stuff like that. There's no real link team involvement needed, but one recent discussion that didn't make it here was about the definition of equality and pattern matching. Um, which is kind of a lang team question and maybe will become a design meeting, <laughs> I think, uh, maybe next month. Do you have patterns? Looks like people are iterating on what standard lib types this should apply. And maybe they'll wanna be a syntax meeting. I'm, I might pop in there. I'm a little surprised. It seems like fairly obvious which standard lib types would be applicable. So I'm curious what the controversy is. I think that controversy mostly got resolved in favor of a fairly conservative first pass of things that definitely make sense and ruling out things where potentially user-defined code could run as part of the dereference. Um, so I think that that more or less got settled. It's just that there wasn't, it, the discussion kind of petered out after it seemed settled and didn't give a definitive. So here's the list that we've all agreed on. Is that right? Okay. There was just no real summary. Okay. 
Uh, I'm curious, did the list wind up including the back? I was wondering about that. Do we want to paste I anything so. for the group here? Like, it seems like our feedback on this might be, it would be nice to see the list. <laughs> Does that seem accurate? Yes. For a little more context, I believe the current proposal here is to consider introducing an internal feature that we can use for just those standard library types. And longer term, there may be a proposal for non-standard library types, but there would be such a substantial value in doing this for a stack of standard library types that should be uh, sidestepping the issue of uh, idempotency for DREF that it might potentially work to support it for those. Wanted to make sure you were just sort of summarizing context. what this was about. Yeah. Right. Well, the specific Nate subset of the proposal that we're doing. Yes. Okay. Maybe we should always put a little response. Well, only if there's something to say. Uh, denying trailing semicolons and expression macro bodies. So seems like it's just kind of blocked. It's fine. Safe transmute. Uh, if I recall, there's been a compiler team, MCP, and they're doing some experimentation. The RFC got closed. They're going to come back after the experimentation phase. Seems OK. Sounds good. So it's, these are all still in the design phase. That seems accurate. Uh, uh, is that true? This could move. Implementation phase, macro meta variable expression. So this is the RFC. Looks like there's some ongoing prototype work. Looks that way. Uh, RFC 229, we've been working pretty well. This feature kind of works now. Um, the We even have the migration lint mostly working. We haven't implemented the uh, auto trait stuff. And the other thing we haven't done that we want to do is do a creator run to gather statistics on the size of closures before and after this change. Um, Mark, we should think about that offline. <laughs> yep. On this, uh, there was an open question some time ago of what the syntax to migrate to oh, yeah. would be yeah. for if you want to do a full capture. Was that ever settled? Uh, we decided for the purposes of this feature to migrate to let underscore equals amp this, essentially. Um, I'm still not very satisfied with that. And I, you reminded me that I want to reopen um, re the uh, capture clause discussion, but I think it's fine for migration purposes. Um, uh, actually, question on that. Doesn't let underscore normally cause an immediate drop, at least today? Uh, it but does, but it drops the reference, which is fine. Oh, let underscore equals borrow of this. I see. So no actual drop occurs, but this forces the full thing to go in. That's right. Yeah. It's and like a you can do that while simultaneously free. you'll be able to do that while simultaneously looking at X dot some field. Yes. Okay. Presumably so. this is like whatever automatic migration we have here would have some sort of special case for using all of the fields or making method calls. It's not really a special case. It's just we capture the like outermost roots kind of that you use. So if you use x.1 and or x.foo and x.foo.bar, we would capture x.foo. But if you use x, we have to capture all of x. Um, so what if we did use all of foo, but not x itself? Well? For, for migration purposes, for the, where, the places where you add let underscore equal x, you would not add those if the, the variable was sort of fully captured somehow either by having all of its fields referenced or by having a method call, right? I see. That's correct. We, it, we only add it if there is some field that wouldn't be captured that has a drop that looks significant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's interesting and subtle, but OK. I, I trust that you all are. I mean, yeah. basically, I won't. Like, if it's a VEC of U32, we, we won't consider that significant. 
but so um so it would drop probably sooner than it would have before because it'll drop when the or around the same time um but locks will not locks for um, example yeah we just kind of added an attribute to a few random types just to lower the noise got um, it I see. So you like um, hard coded this attribute on a few collection types, sort of, but you didn't add like a new trait or anything to. No, mark, no, like, it's not meant gear. for okay. users to use. That's something we actually okay. want to assess: is how noisy is the migration? I haven't. That hasn't been done either. Um, it is a little interesting to me that let underscore on a place. Well, I guess it's a value that looks at a place. Is normally a complete no op, but this would make it not a no op in terms of what gets closure captured. Well, I guess keep in mind, fine. it's not a place exactly. It is let underscore on a place is actually a no op from the analysis point of view, like this. This right. has no, but um, with an yeah, it's I not think, a place because it's a the reference makes it a value. Right. But it's a yeah, it's a reference of a place which does nothing and immediately goes into an underscore. So I guess you're doing this early enough in mirror that that hasn't happened. That the disappearing this hasn't happened yet. I mean, we do right. We do borrow the place. So the semantics for let on, for let pattern equals expression is evaluate the expression to a place if it's not already one, and then match it against the pattern. And evaluating it produces the ampersand x, which then gets matched against underscore, which means that nothing happens to it. Um, so it drops. So it falls out from the regular semantics is what I'm trying to say. Like you always right. evaluate for side effects, and this is kind of a side effect. Um, is there any I should have been taking little notes but I didn't that's okay there weren't any questions anyway um, all right or I mean any questions that we didn't the group needed to answer never type stabilization uh, this may be worth talking about a little bit Mark do you want to yeah. talk about it I, I can talk a little bit about it. So Nico and I have been sort of off and on discussing it uh, over the past month-ish. Um, the current proposal, which is kind of summarized here, and there's a link to the report, uh, is to sort of do even more fancy things to hopefully avoid the corner cases which prevent stabilization today due to backwards incompatibility. Um, the expectation is that I will develop that you know implementation in the compiler over the next several weeks uh, so we can do a crater run and sort of make sure that we're actually correct that the new proposal is sufficient to cover the corner cases. Um, and then if true, that would then allow us to move forward on stabilization, uh, most likely either with an RFC or some kind of MCP or something like that. Um, but I don't know. I, th I think the current feeling, at least in my head, is that uh, we shouldn't discuss the specific proposal until that verification is done. Uh, because we might need to change it again. <laughs> yeah. I think the most important points is that we're not trying to do anything to the addition because there's no mm -hmm. point. Um, because we need the complex thing anyway. Uh, and that we can, assuming it works out, we can sort of add warnings in the interim for crazy or for fallbacks in certain, like except for fallbacks we like. We can start adding warnings and then make them hard errors in the future, in a future edition. That's the basic plan. Yeah, it, I, I think it, it may be worth flagging uh, as a sort of, I don't know, concern of some kind that, you know, the current trajectory of this feature being added does imply like a significant expansion to fallback complexity, um, but that would potentially be limited to sort of old editions in, you know, 2024 or beyond that even. Yeah. Um, but the concrete proposal is obviously not yet ready for you know, detailed review. Um, but it is, I think, worth noting that that's the director we're on. I would also say, from my point of view, I see this as like medium. <laughs> I've gotten renewed interest in getting this done because of the tri-trait work, which seems to lean really heavily on the never type. Uh, and it just seems to be cropping up more and more. So I'm glad we're pushing on it. Yeah, I'm using infallible for now, but it'd be nice to have that magically become bang. Yep. Okay, FFI unwind. 
Um, we have C unwind on nightly. There's a small bug fix. Uh, and we haven't really done much discussion around long jump. That's sort of my recollection. But, um, but C unwind's pretty cool. <laughs> I guess we want to move this to evaluation soon. Um, Considering it's I, implemented at this point, I do think that it uh, would be fair to call it evaluation. Yeah, Nico, implemented. I recall discussing in a past meeting that there may be a need for a new RFC to expand the scope explicitly to long jump, or you know, if that doesn't happen, maybe we shouldn't really do that. Um, is there you know thoughts about that in the group or or any uh, discussion? Yeah, I don't think we need an RFC, like literally an RFC, only because we would need an RFC if we're going to make changes for those changes. But we did it. We did make an RFC to create this group, but I, I think I've moved off from, I've decided that was overkill. But I would like to see some discussion about how much we care about long jump and whether it's like worth trying to solve it. Um, for context, what it means is right now, the way that the of C unwind RFC that we merged was targeted. We kind of, there's no real correct way to do long jump. Um, that's to leave us room to define what the correct way is. Uh, and there's some back and forth about whether it should be like, if we made it, the most obvious thing would be to say, you can long jump over frames without destructors, but that turns out to have a chilling effect on optimization because it means you can never rely on functions uh, to terminate. So you can't do things like, it basically makes panic equals abort less effective because you can't sync writes down and stuff like that. Um, so the alternative is to have some form of annotation where you say this sort of may be long jumped over. Um, uh, uh, for what it's worth, unwind seems like something where it's sufficiently common to dinner, deal with that it's not unreasonable to have a whole ABI worth supporting it and to very carefully integrate it with Rust unwinding. Long jump, if that requires a pile of annotations to support, it is so incredibly rare to need to actively interoperate with that it's more, it needs to work at all. It does not need to be elegant in any way. There is a handful of old C libraries that would very much need support for this. And things like a returns twice annotation or similar, even if it's a giant optimization killing hammer, will still be sufficient because it generally only comes up in error cases. Yeah, the, the key point was whether we assume everything may long jump or whether we're more conservative. Right. I think how given how rare long jump is, we should not sacrifice any uh, positive properties of language or optimization in favor of making long jump better. We should just make it possible with enough care to long jump without undefined behavior. But if you have to annotate a pile of functions or even give a special option to the compiler, I don't think that that would be sad. Um, I'd just like to point out that it's not just long, long jump that is affected. Um, pthread exit also has, um, also basically looks like long jump from the point of view of the compiler that you can't sync writes past a function that may call pthread exit. pthread exit or pthread cancel? pthread exit. Interesting. Um, is that somehow different than just exit? It only exits the current thread. No, I, I realize that. I meant in terms of, uh, is there some fundamental reason from a language semantic point of view that that is different from just, I'm terminating this line of computation and you don't know about it? Um, exit will tear down the address space. So if you forget to sync or write, nobody will notice. Yeah, it doesn't, pthread exit. exit only affects part of the, it's like, you could think of it as modeling as you long jump to this first frame, right? And yeah, basically. Um, so that's why I was asking if semantically that's very different from aborting the whole process. Or... Anyway, 
Okay. We, we can go into the details, but I, I agree with you, Josh, that this is rare, but I still think it's important to support, right? Like there are- It's important to support, absolutely. Just yeah. not important to support transparently. So I guess the yeah. question Mark was raising was like, are we okay with the project group exploring it in the future and proposing an RFC um, at some point? But yeah, I, like, I, yes. I guess I, I personally would feel a lot better, um, obviously not on the lane team or anything, but I would feel a lot better with an MCP basically saying, hey, we would like to explore this. I, I don't know, RFC, I agree, seems a lot, but it feels like there is, it is useful to, you know, call it out explicitly. Maybe there's someone in the community who hasn't been following yeah. along, but sees that MCP and goes, oh, you know, I'm really interested. Right. Um, there was a blog post. I think, I think a good thing would be to amend the charter. Like yeah, for... that, that's, you know. <laughs> right, which Similar. is the PR. Yeah. This seems like an interesting case to me because this whole thing about the, the reason for the MCP isn't to like give people a chance to object. It's just to get publicity, right? And to get more engagement. Is there any I, other reason? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't call it an MCP, but I think there is a point of it's, a, it's supposed to check in with the Lang, Lang team to see that we're, we're still enthused about no. that. Oh, right. Uh, okay. I, I guess my point was more that uh, the, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I can see the idea being like checking in to say, you know, should we investigate, should we invest effort in this? Because if the line team itself doesn't care, then it's a bad idea to invest effort in it. But this thing about a broader community and engaging with them in some fashion, I'm trying to understand, like if the line team already says, yeah, we, we should investigate it. It's, it seems worth the effort. Then what is the, is there any point besides one of the potential for more engagement from, from potential volunteers to actually participate in that working group? Is there any other reason? I think it's just a procedural step. Uh, all right. I'm, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I guess. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah. It's probably it, it not. It feels uh, like there is potential worth, you know, like any decision on scope, it feels, I mean, same way, same reason we publish roadmaps and, and do a, you know, RFC for them obviously much smaller scope and, and maybe we don't want a full RFC, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would like a PR just so it's documented that we set it and we can go back and say, look, here's, we set it. Uh, I'm yep. not too concerned about the, like, um, in this instance, I'm not too concerned about controversy, but. Yeah, for sure. Right, no, I'm fine, okay, I'm, yeah. It's just this, this, this spectrum between RFC, MCP, PR. I was just trying to like hone in on what is the intention. And like Nico's point of view, it sounds like it's just like, it's good to like document that this shift happened and that's a, a PR is perfect for that. But versus what Mark, I think said was the idea of someone else saying, well, I wasn't paying attention to what was going on beforehand, but I might actually like to get involved. And that's- right. But I think for that, the blog wrong. post is a, was already posted uh, and is probably a broader audience, so. Okay, um, okay. All right, cool. Mm, inline assembly, any updates here? Yeah, there's an update from four hours ago giving a full list of the <laughs> stabilization blockers. Okay. So I guess we're just waiting for those to make progress. Right. Uh, yeah. It sounds like the first of those is actually implemented and is just waiting for a feature it's using to stabilize because it's based on the same mechanism as the inline constants blocks. Uh, named labels, I think 81088. Uh, I don't think we should discuss it in this meeting, but there is specifically a decision that needs to be made on how do we handle labels and that one might be worth like that may need a call from the Lang team at some point. Okay, that's good to know. Did you want to chime in here? Sorry. Um, um, as I said, uh, as you said, let's not get into this in this meeting. It's quite it's a detailed, detailed yeah. issue. Okay. Uh, clobbers, we have a rough design for it. Needs to be implemented namespacing, whether we should export the macro in the prelude or in a, mm -hmm. some subpath is in the middle of a huge bike shed. 
Uh, global ASM is also getting upgraded to get the same features as ASM. So I maybe we'll be stabilizing those two together. I don't know. I do have a question oh. about this list of five items. Um, to what extent do these items need to be, which of these items need to be stabilization blockers? As an example, we need to question. know where we're namespacing it, obviously, and we yeah. need inline constants to work if we're going to support that. But yes. for example, do we need clobber ABI to be finished and implemented, or could that be stabilized separately as an enhancement in the future? So that, that's a bit tricky because without clobber ABI, it's actually very subtly incorrect to try to call a function from inline assembly. That's true. We could document that as a limitation and right. still deal with it. I, again, I don't want to go yeah. into the details in this meeting. I'm more saying it would be useful to know which right. of these are Why blockers, blocker? which of these don't need to be blockers, and which of these may or may not be blockers depending on what decisions we make, like the 81088, for example. Right. Yeah, that would be useful. Just sort of why it's a blocker. I had the same question because it seemed like clobbers jumped out at me as I don't know. Does that really need it? But yeah, I'd love to see it happen. It may or may not need to be okay. a blocker for the. Syntax. I'll expand the comments. You give some justifications. Right. Uh, I don't, I'm going to jump because we're coming to the end of the meeting, and maybe we can even resolve this annoying bike shed. Uh, we have this pattern. 2015 pattern 2021 thing there's been some discussion about what we should call the different options i think at this point no one is arguing in favor of the addition base names anymore but there is an option of in addition 2021 pattern will include the option of having multiple patterns and we just have to come up with a name for the thing without multiple patterns and there have been five proposals uh, it looks like nobody's voted on my little poll, which is fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe people should vote, but I'm curious if we can do a quick straw poll or something in this meeting, uh, and maybe it'll I thought settle. We had some sort of policy about not doing GitHub reaction-based polls at one point. No, I don't know. Do we? Well, but maybe that has um, sense not. <laughs> tough. We did actually have one discussion about that. Yes. Um, Concretely, I think we decided that it was uh, unpleasant for whichever options ended up as thumbs down or questionable face, for example, and that that would generate some bias. Well, uh, I, was thinking I, I, more did, about I did think about that. <laughs> but I was thinking more about it being an issue back in the, like, on a couple of, like, async related uh, I, changes. I wrote, and... I wrote that's informative, but also I considered this a yeah. pretty lightweight uh, <laughs> I'm not too worked up about this. So. Oh yeah, it seems fine. I was just, <laughs> I was just kind of laughing at it. Did no one make the pun, Padam? What pun? <laughs> well, Pat thank Adam? you for fixing um, that problem, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, like, like sounds like pattern. What? No, Matt Pat Adam, Adam is. A, yeah, it's a good Padam. Um, never mind. What's that a pun? <laughs> I like it's it. Not a, it's not a word. <laughs> Is it a word? Pat him? No. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's not a word. It's more searchable. Sounds good to me. Is is is, is alt a word? Come on. I mean, that, that's not the point here. Um, if you want to add it to the list, I'll put it in. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, for what it's worth, my personal rationale for not favoring something like subpat is that it implies that this is the last change we will ever make to patterns where here is yes. a subset of a pattern. Right. If we came up with some new mechanism in the future that extends patterns, it would be confusing if subpat is a what amounts to a pat 2021 without ORs. And in the future, if we introduce some other mechanism and need to do a similar migration, then subpat will start being confusing. That's part of why I tended to favor same thing with something like Atom or Alternative, although Alternative is slightly more understandable. That's part of why I favored no or, just because it is very explicit. This is patterns without ors. 
it seems like alternative is pretty specific to me. Like it's one of many alternatives, um, but not necessarily immediately understandable, but specific in the sense that I don't think it would we'd have more meanings for it. Um, maybe that's not how people read it though. Wait, are you suggesting alternative as in this is an alternative syntax for patterns or this is the syntax for one alternative within a pattern? It was the latter was why I chose it. I see. But now I read, as I said it out loud, I realized one could see it as like pattern prime or something. Like this is an alternative pattern. Which that is was how I read it first. No, that's not yeah. what I meant. Maybe pattern op pat option, I don't know. whatever. Okay, forget it. We're not gonna settle this today, are we? I don't know. I'm I'm with Josh on on the no or train. I think, although I was also solidly on the addition based namings train. So I don't I don't know what happened with that. The problem is I hate okay. the no or train. Maybe I'll get <laughs> in just to have it done. Do I really care? I uh, just why do I not like it? I don't like naming things after what they're not. <laughs> as a rule, that's understandable. Uh, um. But, is there a non-addition based name we could use that is patterns as they were before this change? Well, if we're going to name it by time, I think I prefer the addition. I agree, yes. I don't have a, the addition names were also okay, but. I mean, I, I do get the trade-off. If we're going to use it in the future, it's confusing that right. PAT 2015 is the thing if you use if you want to match a pattern inside a closure, whereas, uh, Pat no or at least makes it very explicit. Oh, you need to exclude or because it would conflict with putting or symbols around your uh, uh, closure. Yeah, I can How about like or. orless pat or like pipeless pat or something. Um, I wanted it to be starting with pat, so when you alphabetize, it comes in the right order. Yeah, that there's I would a, agree with. Pat. There's a bit there that was just interesting to me is if it, closure arguments are always going to be this can we have something talking about that like we said function arguments and closure arguments both use this one can we call it pat for closures that's a oh. terrible name but something like that no so what you're saying pat arg for example for, for pat, a yeah, pattern pat in param. an argument yeah yeah pat arg pat param Total total support. It's what it is rather than what it isn't. It tells you the one case where you'll probably want to use it. Works for me. I like that. I, I'm indifferent to whether it's Pat Arg or Pat Param. I will observe Arg is shorter, but otherwise have no preference. I think as a user, I would still be like really curious why I had to use this other thing in this particular place, whereas personally, like having something about the or or the pipe syntax makes it obvious to me like why that is there. Um, but m maybe that's, I don't know, maybe we just expect anyone using this to like have to go read about it. So. I think it doesn't, I feel like in both cases, I would not like neither, neither provides sufficient information to understand. In right. one case, you're like, why did they decide to just subtract or? And in the other case, you're like, what's the difference between you know, for arguments? Uh, between the two of those, yeah. I would actually, even as the person who originally suggested no or, I think my rationale was largely, oh, that tells me what it, you know, that it doesn't have or, so you can put an or after it, which is what you need in a closure. But I think pat arg makes a huge amount of sense for telling you this is when you need it. And that will be more self-explanatory and easier to remember. What do I use in a closure argument? Oh, I use pat arg. Yeah. Also, right. I think we'll have a reference material that describes it. Okay, I'm I can sold. go. Yeah, can go I'm sold on pat arg or pat param. It satisfies my criteria. My my head says pat param because it's a parameter, not the thing, not an argument. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I held myself back from saying that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> No objection. Okay. So meeting recommendation, Pat Param. Cool. Can we call this officially uh, painted as a bike shed? Yes. No new, no, no new rationale though, right? We need to like yeah, actually- I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an plan. RSC bot FCP merge for the final decision and check all your boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. But all right, cool.
uh, we have three, two more minutes. There's not much left. What else is there? Oh, really fast. There was actually a question on this dot dot equals thing. If you all didn't see it, I don't know. Uh, so this person who's been looking into stabilizing these half empty patterns or whatever they're called, and they sort of realized some interesting quirky interactions between or as a pattern alternative and or as a operator in an expression such that things that one might conceivably expect to work don't work. Um, I don't know, it depends on your point of view. And precedents, like if you write this, can you see that? Uh, N at two dot dot three or four that binds like the what? N binds here. Can we add on this? <laughs> My my opinion was all this stuff is fine, <laughs> uh, because yeah, it's true that the precedence is wacky, but that's like orthogonal. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what precedence I would expect, and I feel like if anything, I would want like a lint against that code. Yeah, I would uh, not object to just rejecting and saying please parenthesize. So I think we're just well, that's not what it does, but yeah, you can lint. It's easier to lint. Uh, Sure. These sort of fall out from like the general precedence structure. Uh, this also has nothing to do with this feature, right? The only thing it has to do with this feature is the the spacing. The the yeah, the fact that like you have like three dot dot four and it has an expression here, which plausibly you could imagine four or six as a expression, and you would it doesn't really. Isn't have that pre-existing? That like yeah, it's pre-existing and it's um okay. I don't know. That, I'm was, so my, that was my point: is that it's pre-existing, uh, okay. necessary for backwards compatibility. Um, yeah. So I think there's no problem. I think this person is happy with there being no problem. They just wanted us to be aware of it. Uh, and I don't know what the instruction set is, but since we have no, we have no more minutes. All right. That's fine. This was there before anyway. Read this if you like. Talk to you all later. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.